when I was eating it, I literally had an mmm moment, like a verbal mmm. <laughs> What is the perfect bite? That mix of flavors, textures, colors, and aromas that come together in one amazing amuse bouge Big ideas expressed in small bites. That's our podcast, a variety of inspiring topics to make your financial goals and dreams a reality. Brought to you by Clark County Credit Union for your weekly serving of food reviews, financial education, and life hacks that your future self will appreciate. It's the perfect bite of interesting information to start your week. Welcome to episode 91 of The Perfect Bite. I'm Crystal Price. And I'm Shannon Hiller. Let's dig in. We love trying new dishes here at The Perfect Bite, and today we're talking about public U.S. Next, we'll talk about ways you can save on moving costs. And finally, we'll share how you can find a hobby as an adult. Each week on The Perfect Bite, we'll share a locally owned Southern Nevada restaurant that we hope will become your new favorite. This week, we're sharing a personal favorite, Public U.S. They're located downtown in the Arts District, and the name comes from the Greek translation of the phrase, for the people. So it was opened in 2004, and when the city started this transformation of the downtown area in an attempt to revitalize and bring both the old and the new together. Do you remember that time when it was like, Big news, and oh, it was for like sure. But I, I'm, I haven't heard of this one. So when I saw that it was from 2004, I was like, I mean, I worked downtown at the time, and I've never been there. So yeah, so oh I didn't no, hear about it. Mm-mm. Okay, yeah, I've been there a couple of times. I want to say I've been there for like different meetings, um, different meeting places. So it must and be big. Some of those downtown. It's not arts too big. Tiny. It's it's actually it's. I mean, it's not big. It's not small. Um, it's definitely, you have to drive through the old to get to the new, (laughs) depending on which way you come into it. But it's really nice because it's got different little sections of it. So some areas you can definitely go with like a large group and have like a meeting thing. So I went there once with, it was like a chamber event. Mm -hmm. So, you know, chamber events, there's definitely like a lot of people so you can go there for that or I could see like people having like a birthday party or even like um like a like a bachelorette or something like that I could see what kind of food is it it's breakfast could be lunch okay breakfast and lunch place um and it's really cool it's kind of like a hipster kind of thing they've got like a bunch of knickknacks all around on the walls there's like bookshelves and things like that photos actual books on the bookcases it makes you really want to go look and see kind of like oh what's on the book case like I want to see what, what are these usually books? the arts district places or downtown I'm like I'm not cool enough to be here no it <laughs> makes you so cool it you makes you inside. feel like you're you're part of like something um when I came it was like super early in the morning I think I got there it was like maybe seven in the morning I went before work because I was like I know we needed something for the podcast I'm like I'm gonna go before work I'm gonna venture out I'm gonna go downtown so I got there just as they were opening up open the door and they're like good morning and I'm like oh hi good morning <laughs> We're waiting for you. (laughs) Yeah, that's how it felt. I felt very welcomed. But I wasn't the only one there. There was already people in there, and they had their laptops out, and, like, people were ready to go to work. And so I was like, oh, maybe I should have brought my laptop to go to work because, you know, we work from home some days. So I was like, I could have, you know, started my day here too, but I didn't. Anyways, I go up to the server, and um, because it's the podcast, I wanted to know his opinion on what I should order. So I was like, well, what do people what do people order here? What do you recommend? His favorite was the oatmeal chocolate chunk cookie. So I was like, okay, I'll take one of this. And he was like, also people like the blueberry cream cheese scone. People also like the almond croissant. And I was like, you know what? Let's just get them all. <laughs> Why not? Carpe diem. <laughs> he didn't even bat an eye. He, he packed them all up. <laughs> He was like, to go or for here? I was like, you know what? I'm going to eat them here. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so he does that. Um, again, then I ask him, um, well, what tea do you recommend? Um, he recommends the winter sprout tea, which is an oolong tea. I've never had this before. But again, I'm just going with it. Recommendation by the um, barista. Um, so I order that. And all of those items came up to $20, which I think was a pretty good deal because the, the items, they're all they were huge. So with the tea included? With the tea oh, included. And it was loose leaf tea. It wasn't wasn't a bag tea. Everything was like fresh made to order. All the items are um, organic or locally um, produced where they can be. So it was really cool. It was really, really nice in there. Everything was super delicious. Um, I think out of all of those items, my favorite thing was the almond croissant. 
when I was eating it, I, that was the last thing I ate. When I was eating it, I literally had an mmm moment, like a verbal mmm. <laughs> And it was it was crazy because it was like kind of loud and I kind of like looked around like, oh, my gosh, did anybody like <laughs> hear me do this? Because it was kind of embarrassing, but it was so good. <laughs> so um, definitely recommend the almond croissant. I think what I'll order next time is I'll order lunch because I've never gone there for lunch. The times that I've gone in the past, it's always been breakfast. Um, so I'll order from the lunch menu. Um, their lunch looks really good. Like I mentioned before, they use local and or organic produce when it's possible. So I want to do that. Um, my recommendation is um, when you go, like I mentioned, it is downtown. So like we've said before in the past, downtown parking can be hard. So plan for parking. When I arrived, it was early in the morning, so I was able to get in and out. But if you do go for like a lunchtime visit, you want to plan for that parking. Well, if you have a recommendation or a restaurant for us to try, send us a message at theperfectbite at ccculv.com. We're always open to new ideas. Next up, if you want to save on moving costs, having an organized plan and a budget for your things in advance can help you lessen the stress and surprises that may arise. So today we're sharing some items that you may need to work into your budget if you're planning on moving. Uh, just thinking about moving makes my eyes start to twitch a little bit. Um, <laughs> when's the last time that you moved, Crystal? It's been about five years for me, so maybe you and I can both share some tips. Too. Yeah, it's been a couple years for me too, so have some tips. Yeah. yeah, and the last time I moved was in town. We're going to talk about kind of in town versus out of town moves, but it can get very expensive and add up very quickly when you're looking to move. So the first way is self-move. That's best if you're moving within the same city or state and you hopefully can uh, rely on maybe friends and family to help you pack up everything. And so if you are going to get a rental truck, it's really important to select the right size. So we did this before in town and it was like, okay, could we make multiple trips mm -hmm. and get a smaller one? But then you're paying for gas. And so back and forth, back, back and, and forth, forth. Exactly. Yeah. So I think it depends on one, your budget and two, your personal preference. Do I really want to pack up a thousand times or do I want to do yeah. this? So I was making like an in-town move and every a couple of days I was just moving like a minivan full of stuff over. Mm -hmm. And so it just felt like the move was taking forever. Like yeah. it just really was exhausting. And the distance too, like, is it, you know, two miles or is it right. 20 miles back right. and forth? Exactly. So, uh, look for a truck company that includes the miles driven in their rental fee or is like, is it a flat rate? So that can help you decide how much money you would have to spend and then decide if you actually want to rent that, uh, moving truck. The other thing to think about is the actual moving equipment or supplies. We've moved enough times now that we have some of those straps and the, the dollies, the yeah. rollers, things like that, the blankets to protect your stuff. But those are all things that you can rent as well. And so I was saying even boxes can be hard to get yeah. and they're expensive mm -hmm. if you actually buy a box. So come on, we should all shop from Amazon. Like just start saving yes. those Amazon boxes. Or what I do is I go to work and say, whoever kind of does the ordering. Can mm -hmm. you start saving boxes yes. for me like two weeks in advance? And, and then they'll do that. And or so even if you go online, like I'll see sometimes even online, yeah. like anybody have any free boxes, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like in your face, Facebook group in your area. So basically just other things you might need tape markers, bubble wrap, tissue paper. I'll use uh, clothes even to wrap things. I'm like, I'm going to pack yeah. these clothes or these towels or, mm -hmm. you know, hand towels and then wrap up maybe dishes or things that are breakable. So you're going to pack it anyway. You might as well use it to protect your stuff. Uh, the next would be professionals or helpers who can help you move things. I always think about my in-laws. They're in the military. Mm. And when you move for the military, they will either give you the money and uh, you can hire someone okay, or they nice. will move you. And whatever's in your house, they will pack up and oh. take. And so one of their friends had left just everything, just everything in there. So the movers actually packed and boxed a garbage can filled with garbage. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and moved it. And they moved it, like, overseas. And oh, so by my the time goodness. you get this disgusting package it was like weeks that this garbage like, had okay been there. you left it so yeah you whatever go. <laughs> you leave those movers might take so be careful so uh definitely first check if you have you know for those local moves like can i get friends and family but you may look at a professional mover especially if you're moving out of state or across the country or just even like you said you know north las vegas to 
Southern Highlands or whatever you're moving far. So moving companies often calculate the weight of items and the distance traveled or even uh, by the pound of what you're bringing. So it's like, so check both rates to determine the true cost of your move. Yeah. I didn't know this either, but it's so interesting. Economists will track the cost of moving trucks oh. to help decide which states are more popular when people are moving. <laughs> so if it's really popular, I heard the other day that 98 people move to Las Vegas every single day. Oh, wow. And then people, a lot. less people are moving out. So they're almost going to charge you like more to get here. And uh-huh. then they're basically saying like, please just bring it back so the next person can... <laughs> can take the the van or the van or the truck or whatever so yeah they're they're looking at the the cost will always be different based on where you're taking the truck that's interesting but it makes sense yeah Yeah. like we just need someone to drive it back to us because california is like everyone's moving from california to las vegas so just bring the truck back for free and then we'll charge you (laughs) to move to las vegas Uh, The other thing is insurance. You know, maybe you have something valuable that the movers are transporting, and it's a good idea to get some coverage. Uh, Moving insurance is available, especially if it's a long drive and something might get damaged. And just make sure to understand what you're getting. Like, I think peace of mind, if there really was something super valuable, I'd probably just bring it in my car or on the airplane or, you know, I don't know, maybe you have like a baby grand piano or something that Mm -hmm. you can't do that with. Then think about insurance and you might want to add something like that. There's also um, extra fees for moving your vehicle, assembling, packing appliances, just all sorts of little add-ons that you need to check for. So just keep these expenses in mind the next time you have a big move and budget accordingly. Now let's take a break to hear from our sponsor. CCCU has a bonus for you. High five. It's 5% interest on a bonus checking account only available at Clark County Credit Union. That's 5% on your money. And it's just one more benefit of membership at Clark County Credit Union. Isn't it time for you to join? Anyone can be a member because if somebody's making money off your checking account, shouldn't it be you? Open a bonus checking account today and start earning your 5% only at CCCU. Funds privately insured by American Share Insurance. Next up is our Future Self segment inspired by the Happiness Project. So hobbies are more than just a way to spend your free time outside of work. Having a hobby could be also a way to bring more joy, help you learn a new skill, and lower your stress hormones, aka cortisol. If having a hobby feels foreign to you, we'll share some tips to help you find a hobby. A hobby that I'm working on is um, just really getting, spending more time working on myself, exercise, fitness is one thing that I like to do, getting to the gym, spending more time um, working out. (laughs) What what are some hobbies that you enjoy, Shannon? I don't love the gym as much as I love sports. Okay, yeah. So I like to play tennis, and I used to play volleyball a lot more, but I still enjoy every now and then getting out and playing, playing volleyball. And then I really like... I'm not like a great photographer, but I like mm. photos and I, I do like too. documenting my family's activities and I love photo books. And so mm. I will kind of obsessively be that person who's like insisting me take a photo because then I'll always, I'll make a photo book or I'll, you know, I used to do a blog pretty religiously and print out those. And so I, I kind of think of myself as like the family historian, but yeah. mostly through photos. I used to write a lot more. That's but. actually me too. I, yeah. I have like a whole photo wall and it's like, okay, now I got to crop this and get this. What's the right, right frame for it? Mm-hmm. No, it's like, it's not the right color. It's not the right size. And so yeah, actually yeah. photos is one I of my photo- other hobbies as well. So yeah. So one thing you can do is first think about what you enjoyed doing when you were little. And definitely photos is one of those things. I remember in my room when I was in high school and middle school, I had um, one of my, my bedroom walls and it was filled with photos, things that I took um, with my own camera, things that I pulled from like magazines, just filled with pictures, mm-hmm. images. Um, so definitely I can I can see why I enjoy pictures as it as an adult. So if you were a crafty child, artistic hobbies such as painting, sculpting, or textile art may be something that appealed to you as an adult. Um, If you were involved in school sports like Shannon, you could also enjoy um, joining a recreational sports team that meets during the weeknights or weekends. Finding inspiration during your childhood is a good place for you to start as an adult. Shannon, are your current hobbies things that you like doing as a kid? Yeah, I mean, we grew up playing a lot of sports and The other thing that I was thinking about as a kid is we did a lot of music. Oh, okay. That was actually a rule because we wanted to play sports, but both my parents were musical. And so they said Mm. you had to play an instrument if you wanted to do sports. So it was like their way of 
kind of forcing us to do both. <laughs> and so I was just sitting here thinking, I do have my clarinet from back in the day. And okay. I have tried to, I've taken piano lessons as an adult and oh. tried. It was very, diff- it was like right around the pandemic. So it just didn't mm-hmm. really stick. But, but yeah, I think it's good to think back and say, you know, why did I stop drawing? Why did mm-hmm. I stop, you know, making even collages, you know, it's yeah. like scrapbooks and things like that and get back into those. I wonder if even like music, like just like sitting and like listening to music, Mm -hmm. is that like something that you like enjoy doing? Yeah, I do. And I think also like when you read about things that help your brain stay active as you get older, Mm -hmm. uh, learning an instrument and learning uh, language are two things that really keep your brain, all those synapses firing or whatever, Mm -hmm. um, keeping you young, keeping you alert. So yes. So consider your interests. The exciting thing about interest is that you don't need to be an expert, okay? Focus on honing in on those skills and seeing if it is something that you can turn into a hobby. If you're passionate about sustainability or botany, you could try gardening or growing your vegetables. If you like fashion, you could try sewing or jewelry making. Um, This is another thing. When I was younger, I used to, um, I I thought I was a a young fashionista Mm -hmm. and I used to... (laughs) make my own skirts I used to make like little purses and things I don't know if they were the best but I definitely wore them out and so I think as an adult I I I try to be but I don't make my own stuff but I definitely like to shop Mm -hmm. (laughs) so that is another one of my interests Um, another thing you can do is take um, introductory classes taking intro classes is a great way to dip your toes into something and see if it's something worth committing to going to classes may be an opportunity to meet people who are on the same level as you and can also be a great activity to bond with friends and family Um, some classes offer prices at a discounted rate or even as a free trial you could check out like a local YMCA, something like that. Try searching for classes and lessons in your area, and you're likely to find everything from pottery to even graphic design. We want to hear from you. Send us your financial questions or money topics that you'd like to learn more about, and don't forget any fun local food recommendations. Our email is theperfectbite at ccculv.com. Thank you for listening to this week's episode brought to you by Clark County Credit Union. For additional money management tips and financial calculators, check out our website at ccculv.org. Now that was the perfect bite.